Hi everyone, my name is Alejandro Macias. I'm currently an assistant professor in 2D at the University of Arizona School of Art. I wanted to give a big thanks to the UA Museum of Art for asking me to talk a little bit about my work. What I decided to do with this video, uh, especially under the very strange circumstances, is just do a very brief uh, casual um, studio visit. So you're going to be hearing about a few artists that I'm personally inspired by and um, you're going to see older work, uh, some newer work, works in progress, and um, yeah, just talking about my process and and um, what I'm currently doing. So I just want to give you a big thank you for checking out, checking this out, and um, looking forward to it. Okay. So um, let me kind of build some sense of foundation of where I kind of built from and expanded on. And so in, um, <clears throat> so I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley, specifically Brownsville, Texas. And uh, that's where I studied and I spent the majority of my personal professional life there. And I knew when I was studying under Carlos Gomez, who I pay tribute to here, at UT Brownsville back, uh, I graduated in 2008. And I always knew that I wanted to be a figurative painter because I, I could use the figure as a vessel to talk about the issues that were most important to me. And so for some reason, I just kind of drew to that. And, you know, now I, 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 a lot of my work is figurative and it still is after all so many years, but I, I think conceptually many of the ideas have kind of come into place. So in 2016, you know, I started to kind of reflect not only on my mentor's work, who obviously, and I feel he's an incredibly underrated painter. Um, he died in, in, in 2016, unfortunately, and his death really had a huge, um, and his life, obviously, most of all, had a huge effect on me as a painter and, and just as a human being. And so, um, you know, he was a Chicano painter. Uh, his work, along with the work of Cesar Martinez, who I, I'm very fortunate to know, um, you know, and I've learned a lot from. Um, he is also one of the leading figures of the Chicano movement. And then, uh, in a more contemporary sense, um, Vincent Valdez, who has tackled um, on a number of issues, uh, social political uh, issues that are affecting us today, and obviously. Uh, he's done a lot of work that also reflects back on the Chicano experience, the Mexican-American experience. And so a lot of my work draws from um, how I was inspired by their work. And uh, so now I'm going to kind of jump a little forward. And, and so coming from Brownsville, um, a lot of the work that, you know, I think it is finally flourishing and blooming and, you know, a lot of artists are finally getting the attention that they deserve. You know, it is a wonderful and beautiful uh, place full of, um, you know, colorful, uh, vibrant, beautiful culture. And it is a mixture of cultures. And so uh, I tried to reflect that in my work and talk about not only the division that's being created there, in a natural division, but also simultaneously a combination in, and you know, there's a sense of, um, uh, this hybrid effect that that's kind of happening along the border. And so, uh, in 2016, I started doing a lot of work that, um, let's see, I'll, I'll try to take one here. Um, that was just really heavy, uh, you know, drawing based, and so I was really kind of interested in capturing the likeness of the people that I knew um, and, and uh, really cared more about, you know, more traditional mark making and uh, capturing the human form. And so, um, um, and so kind of, like I said, coming from Brownsville, a lot of the work that people respected was work that dealt with uh, a subject matter subject matter that was more representational. And so obviously portraits, figurative work, still lives, landscapes. And um, I in 2016, I, I took it upon to kind of 
understand the figure more and try to uh, you know capture the likeness and and really uh, tighten up my skill as a draftsman. Uh, in 2017, 2017, I think there was a, a huge shift in my work. I started thinking about the division um, um, that is the Rio Grande Valley and the division that's kind of created by the Rio Grande River and using that as a metaphor to kind of uh, approach my technique and studio practice. You know, I've always had also just a huge interest in and be, being able to kind of experiment and broaden and uh, explore my tools as a painter. And so um, you'll see like in 2017, a huge shift in my work. Um, I also brought this one out to kind of talk about, you know, the assimilation process. So a lot of my work deals with, you know, um, kind of transforming and, and kind of even uh, letting go of and turning your back on your heritage and how kind of uh, dangerous that really is. Um, and so you'll see a lot of kind of abstract kind of loose mark making as a way to kind of, and there's a balance, right? There's me trying to capture the likeness of my subjects. And then, and I'm doing a lot of self-portraiture because I'm also dealing with identity in my own personal kind of journey as a Mexican American, assimilating, you know, I, I grew up um, just speaking Spanish up until third grade. And then there was a shift, you know, I, I think also just uh, not being able to pronounce words specifically, kind of like this mild trauma. And, and so, and so that kind of really affected me when I was a kid. And so I started to kind of embrace everything that was American, you know, what is it? What is it to be American? And so I kind of reflect that in a lot of my work, uh, conceptually um, through my process and and technique and execution. So in this case, for example, there is like literally a division between techniques, and so I'm uh, I'm referencing the Sarape design as a way to tackle on Mexican um, culture and my my kind of ethnic and and heritage. Uh, and so, and so I do this and, you know, this one's uh, obviously a tribute to my professor, Carlos Gomez. And then here, I kind of brought this one out as a way to also reflect on that. And so obviously I'm talking about, again, the, the Sarapa design and it's, it's reflected in the background. And then there's, I literally cut the panel as a way to kind of talk about and reference the division. And so this one's called the space between. And so I'm reflecting on, on you know, that that space that is the Rio Grande Valley, and it you know, and how it isn't really a very clear definition. You know, it is. It's a very gray area, a variety of grays, you know, culturally, and so. Um, but there is that kind of space that exists, and it, I can't really define it specifically. But also like using the American flag to kind of cover myself as a way to talk about me camouflaging myself and finally kind of embracing and distancing myself from my my uh, heritage. Uh, and um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of referencing that. Going back to this kind of like loose approach, I this one was a, <laughs> a different painting before, like even a week ago. And it was titled "Ongoing," and I I'm I titled it "Ongoing" because I'm, I'm referencing this transformative process. And um, but I didn't like the way the painting turned out, and I actually even exhibited it like this in Lubbock last year. Not like this because I changed it, but like last week I I went on Facebook Live. I mean, not Facebook, but like Instagram Live, and I went and kind of just went and destroyed it in a sense. And, and transformed it and was much more playful with my approach, not trying to be, you know, tight and and try to render the figure in any sense. And in fact, like there were so many things about the painting that I didn't like that just weren't up to par with how I felt it should have been. And then the quality wasn't there. And so I just kind of, I actually kind of like it more now. I feel like visually it's just much more appealing to me. Um, so well, that, that's how I ended up. Um, going back to this one, I don't think I talked about it, but, you know, going back to that, that sense of division where 
I'm trying to tackle on, you know, precision and trying to um, render something in a realistic way. And, uh, but using this as a metaphor to talk about, um, again, ident identity and simulation. So this one's called Nopal en la Frente. And that's a saying that I heard uh, consistently in my childhood as a way, you know, it's a, a saying that my mom would kind of uh, bring up as a way to talk about how I was kind of pushing back and kind of turning my back on my, uh, my culture and heritage. And so, but as a, also a way of saying, like, there's no running from it. You are what you are. And it translates to you have a cactus in your forehead. So also like the top section is is an abstract uh, nopal. And so again, using that as a metaphor to talk about the division as a way, uh, not only the uh, technique, obviously, but as a way to talk about uh, my experience and then they're existing within the same two dimensional plane. Okay, so I'll kind of also um, briefly talk about these. And so uh, this one's I feel a bit more straightforward and I wanted to do a flat painting, but also kind of play with abstraction. And, and so I, what I did is I referenced the, the Mexican and American flag and I kind of bunched them up because uh, I have two flags and I, and I took photos of them and, and, and then I broke it down to these like uh, flat planes of color and I created the silhouette and um, within it, it, I'm just playing. There is no sense of blending. There is no sense of of trying to kind of uh, combine the colors. It's, they're kind of very divided. And so um, that's just kind of me playing with abstraction. And this one is very new. I actually did this one this year. But um, this also kind of ref not only references my move from, from Texas um, to... Uh, Arizona, but also talking about uh, obviously again referencing identity and, and causing this. There's this shift um, within the, within this kind of transformative um, process, and but also just referen reference. This one's called hidden in plain sight, but it also kind of tackles on on some of my social political kind of fears and and talking also about the migrants' journey. And um, and also kind of, you know, there's so many people that refuse to kind of acknowledge what's happening with the migrants journey. And, and uh, you know, people refuse to kind of uh, read up on anything political. And so, but I, I think a lot of what is happening today, when is anything not political? I feel like there is in some way something is politicized. And so I, I try to kind of reference a lot of subjects that are, you know, be refused or refuse to be seen or, you know, forgotten about. But I mean, they're still there. They still exist. And um, and also kind of referencing, again, like um, the journey of, of migrants across to the Arizona desert and um, and then kind of perish and uh, are forgotten or, or, or have disappeared you know, because of how brutal the desert is. And so, you know, these are obviously important issues that, that should be talked about. And um, and so although maybe they're kind of pushed to the side or these issues are pushed to the side, they're still there. So um, that's why it's kind of, I've, I've titled this one Hidden in Plain Sight. Um, before uh, I actually started doing some more of the kind of works that dealt with the migrant experience and, you know, migrant deaths. I, I did these initially and, um, also talk about, you know, not only the border, uh, in Texas, but, you know, across the whole United States. And so when I moved to Arizona, I did this one late last year. Um, and it is about, uh, you know, they're, they're not really kind of as aggressive um, and so they're more of, you know, the silhouettes of, of migrants that have unfortunately passed away. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm interested in the Arizona border and how, um, how brutal that desert can be. And, and so many of the migrants that try to attempt to cross over 
disappear and never um, found. And so, um, and, and also very difficult, they're very difficult to identify. So this one specifically is of like a migrant um, that passed away in Arizona. And so I took the silhouette, you know, the only way that she was able to ident be identified was because uh, they found her ID. And so I took the silhouette from the ID and then within it uh, put the, the Arizona desert. And this one is, um, I believe his name was Anastasio Ro uh, Rojas. And so, and um, he actually was, I explored his story and he was a migrant in, in San Diego and he lived there for a number of years, lived there with his common law wife, had a few children and, um, and then he was deported back into Mexico. And so when he tried, he couldn't live without his family, obviously. So he tried to make his way back and he was uh, eventually detained and, you know, and deported back, but then, um, you know, try to make his way back. And then he actually died under custody. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm also exploring not only kind of natural terrain, but then also like the San Diego, you know, skyline and, and, and the cityscapes. So obviously, um, you know, I, I kind of tackle also in a lot of work, uh, a lot of subject matter that might be really heavy and uh, definitely t uh, difficult to talk about. But I feel like I try to capture a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the brutal realities that kind of we live with. And so this one it hits much closer to home because it's about two migrants from El Salvador who passed away trying to cross into Brownsville. And so they drowned the Rio Grande River uh, and their names were uh, Oscar and Valeria. And so um, here I've, I've kind of uh, portrayed them and how they were found um, in Brownsville. And so um, I've rendered them again in, in, a, in a much more traditional sense, but I made sure when I went and explored the water, it, it was in a very loose, uh, fashion and uh, in a very playful, naive type of way. So I started to think about, you know, what their potential futures could have looked like and um, what they were potentially, um, well, I mean, they were robbed from. And so, um, you know, I think this is obviously a huge issue that's, that's still kind of affecting us and, and uh, many migrants uh, today. And you know, speaking of the migrant journey, I also felt like it was important to talk about these, uh, this diptych. And it's of my grandparents, of uh, my maternal grandparents. And so, um, you know, I started to think about their own journey as, as migrants. They're uh, American citizens now, and they have been for quite some time. But, you know, obviously I wouldn't be here without them. And, um, but I thought it was in, important to like... <laughs> kind of portray them as like aliens and how even the term, that term can be incredibly dehumanizing. But I started wondering, like, they're obviously very comfortable living in Brownsville, but I started to, I started to think about what hap what would happen if they lived anywhere else. And, you know, Brownsville is, uh, uh, you know, has like a 95, 96% uh, Hispanic population. And so I started to think about um, if, if they didn't live in an area that wasn't like that how they would be treated or, you know, would they be maybe seen as aliens? So here I have them kind of, you know, how they look now. They're a little, you know, obviously a little older and, and, but they're kind of looking at each other, reflecting and uh, reflecting on the past, on the journey. And, uh, you know, obviously portrayed them green because I, I started to see, you know, try to see them uh, get in other people's pers like. Uh, points of view or perspectives and and then I've had them like you know uh, against the backdrop, backdrop of the stars you know as if they were indeed aliens but yeah they're reminiscing and then I I mock I also made like a you know three minute loop uh, with kind of this res like rhythmic uh, sound but also kind of overlapped with these like kind of abstract strange kind of space like alien sounds and um so eventually when i do exhibit these they'll have that 
sound coming from them either through a speaker or a headset and you can just listen in as they as they communicate and um, I think I'll just end it on a couple of works that I've been I just either so this one I just did recently and this is uh, a work that is uh, referencing um, the painting uh, the raft of the Medusa and um, you know, just like many of the other artists that I've been inspired by, you know, I'm referencing history. And uh, and so this is about a raft, uh, like a French uh, uh, ship that was actually the sunk. And so I think there was about 150, like, uh, crew members that eventually were <clears throat> on a raft. And then they started slowly kind of perishing and and you know uh dying starvation and sickness and and uh but i'm referencing this work uh you know it's obviously i'm appropriating the imagery um and um talking about the pandemic so this one i titled title it the battle for 2020 and so i'm referencing you know what so much has happened in so little time in 2020 and it just a lot of it just feels like chaotic and you know there's a lot of confusion and and you know fear and um you know where a lot of us are kind of you know uh i i've read that you know the u.s is now 6.6 .6, you know 6.6 .6 million people have now are unemployed and um and so economically like what does this mean for us and and you know i've, I've obviously do a lot of work about the migrant's journey and and so now that we're suffering economically and you know the effects of this pandemic might be i mean they're difficult to even envision um and so what does that even mean not only for us but also for the migrant who obviously is looking for a better life and so in this case i'm I, you know i it, it really is a study um of uh, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, uh, Jericho. And so, um, but I've made some few minor changes and those being mostly, or the one, uh, holding up, uh, the Kobe Bryant Jersey, obviously Kobe Bryant passed away earlier this year. And then obviously the huge kind of demand for toilet paper and the hoarding of toilet paper. Um, so he, the man in the center is holding the last, uh, and waving the last roll of toilet paper. And then you have Donald Trump kind of hiding on the bottom left, you know, kind of watching chaos ensue on the sinking raft. And then last but not least, I'm working on another painting. And, and you know, I, I was in quarantine in Texas for a week during spring break. And so I, I wasn't going to drive back. I ended up flying into the airports were absolutely dead and so this is just kind of like uh you know me capturing what i was wearing the day that i flew back to arizona and so um you know i've done like a red kind of uh setup uh, um design for my face wearing a mask and at the whole time i was wearing a hoodie when i came back and so um you know uh, there was someone that told me don't forget the gloves so this is what i'm gonna be Titling it, don't forget the club. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of like a work in progress that I'm kind of working on and just depicting some of the kind of stuff that's happening and that I deal with uh, currently during this pandemic. Well, thanks for listening.